Hi, today we're going to be learning about translations, which is part of the transformation geometry section. We're going to start off by talking about transforming points and shapes. Points and shapes on the Cartesian plane can be transformed in different ways. They can be translated, which means that they can be moved or shifted. They can be reflected, which is the same as flipping them. They can be rotated or turned. And then they can be enlarged or reduced, which obviously means to make them bigger or smaller. Okay, now, when a point is transformed, then the image of the point after the transformation is called A prime, which is written like this. So this, we pronounce it and we say it A prime, and this is what it looks like. This is what the point becomes after it has been transformed. Now we're going to be going on to translating points on the Cartesian plane. Here's the first example we're going to do. It says write down the coordinates of B prime if B, which is 3, 6, is translated 2 units to the right and 10 units down. So first let's take a look at where B is on the Cartesian plane. Okay, so if I plot the point B, 3, 6, I go 3 and then up 6. So my point B, 3, 6 is going to be this point over here. Now we need to translate that 2 units to the right and 10 units down. So if I take this point and I go 1, 2 to the right and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm going to end up with a point down there. That is the point B prime. Okay, so this is what it started off as, the point B. After the translation, it becomes B prime. Okay, and then the point B prime has got the coordinates. If you look over here, the, the x value is 5 and the y value is minus 4. So that's going to be the point 5 minus 4. Okay, so that's how you translate a point. Now you're going to do a few of them for yourself. In this activity over here, you're going to be working with four different points, and you're going to be translating them in different ways. In some of them, it says shifting or moving or translating or sliding. It doesn't matter. They all mean the same thing. They're all different ways of saying the same type of transformation, which is translations. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this activity. Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So the first one you have to do was point A. Point A is the, has the coordinates minus 4, 3, and that is going to be over here. So there's my point A. Now we're going to go and shift it four units to the right. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's where I'm going to end up. So this is going to be my point A prime, and that has the coordinates 0, 3. Okay, so after A, which is minus 4, 3, is shifted, Four units to the right, it becomes A prime, which is 0, 3. Okay, then the next one, point B 
has the coordinates 2 minus 3. So that's going to be over here. And it needs to be moved 5 units down. So we're going to take this and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to end up with our point over here. That is the point B prime, which has the coordinates 2 minus 8. So as we should have got for that one. Then point C, 0, 0, that's actually sitting right there on the origin. So this is our point C over here. We need to shift it or translate it 7 units up and 6 units to the left. So I'm going to go over here, 7 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 6 units to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that gives us a point over here. So that is the point C prime, which is minus 6, 7. And then the last one, the point D is 2 minus 1. So that's going to be over here, 2 minus 1. We need to slide that 8 units to the left and 4 units up. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the left. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 up. And that'll give us a point about over there. And that is the point D prime, which has the coordinates minus 6, 3. So that's what we should have got for each of those questions. Right, now let's go and have a look at translating shapes on the Cartesian plane. So now we're going to be translating shapes, not just points. But when a shape is translated, all the points in the shape undergo the same translation. Okay, so it's going to be the same as what we've been doing with the points. We're just going to be doing the same translation to each point in the shape. Okay, so now let's have a look at our first example. Write down the coordinates of A prime, B prime, and C prime if triangle ABC with vertices A, which is minus 7, 6, B, which is minus 8, 4, and C, which is minus 3, 3, is translated 9 units to the right and 5 units down. Okay, so we're going to start off by plotting our triangle, by plotting each of these points and joining them up to form a triangle. This is what you should get over here. So A is the point minus 7, 6 over there. B is minus 8, 4 over here, and C is minus 3, 3 over here, and they have all been joined to make a triangle. So that's the triangle ABC. Now we need to translate it 9 units to the right and 5 units down. So I need to do that with each of the points. Okay, because remember, when you're translating a shape on the Cartesian plane, you can translate each point with the same translation, and then the whole shape will end up being translated. Okay, so we're going to take this point and go 9 units to the right and 5 units down. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 5 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that gets us this point over here. Then B, same thing. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which gives me this point over here. And then C, same thing again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I end up with this point over here. Okay, and that should end up giving you a triangle that looks like this. So now I've got my triangle. A ended up over here, giving us A prime, this point over here. B became B prime over here. C became C prime over here. And we end up with a triangle that looks exactly the same as that one. It's just the whole triangle has now moved by this translation of 9 units to the right and 5 units down. Now let's have a look at the coordinates of each of these points. So A started at minus 7, 6. A prime is the point 2, 1. B started at minus 8, 4, B prime is the point mi or 1 minus 1, and C started at minus 3, 3, C prime is the point 6 minus 2. So that's what we should get for that example. Right, so now I'm going to give you one that you're going to do for yourself. You're going to start off with this example by drawing the triangle PQR on the Cartesian plane. If you don't have the worksheets that go with this lesson, you'll need to draw a Cartesian plane for yourself, otherwise you can use the one that's provided. So you're going to start off by drawing your triangle on the Cartesian plane by first plotting each of the points P, Q, and R, and then joining them up to make a triangle. Then you need to draw the triangle P prime, Q prime, R prime, which is the image of triangle P, Q, R after it's been translated five units to the left and four units down. And then you need to write down the coordinates of P prime, Q prime, and R prime. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this example.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So the very first thing you had to do was you had to plot the triangle PQR on the Cartesian plane. So the point P is minus 2, 1, the point Q is minus 1, 5, and the point R is 6, 0. So you should have ended up with a triangle that looked like this, where P is the point negative 2, 1, Q is negative 1, 5, and R is 6, 0. So that's what you should have had for your triangle for question A. Then you have to draw the image of triangle PQR after a translation of five units to the left and four units down. This is what you should have ended up with over here. You should have had the point P prime over here, the point Q prime over here, and the point R prime over here, where this whole triangle has been translated five units to the left and four units down. Then your coordinates of the points P prime, Q prime, and R prime P prime, you should have got the coordinates negative 7, negative 3. So that's what you should have got for that one. Q prime is the point negative 6, 1. That's over here. And R prime is the point 1, minus 4 over here. So that's what you should have got for each of those points. Okay, now we're going to go and have a look at the area and perimeter of a shape when it undergoes a translation transformation. Okay, so first... Let's have a look at this example over here. It says rectangle ABCD with vertices A, which is the point minus 5, minus 2. B is the point negative 5, negative 7. C is the point 2, negative 7. And D is the point 2, negative 2. Is translated 4 units to the right and 8 units up. So first we're going to start off by drawing ABCD using the points that they gave us. So that is this over here. Okay, so A is negative 5, negative 2. B is negative 5, negative 7, C is 2, negative 7, and D is 2, negative 2. So that's our triangle or our rectangle ABCD. Then it says that it has been translated or it is being translated 4 units to the right and 8 units up. That should give us a rectangle that looks like this. Now we need to work out the perimeter of the rectangle ABCD, and we also need to work out the perimeter of the image of the rectangle ABCD after it has been translated. Then we also need to work out the area of rectangle ABCD and the area of the image of rectangle ABCD after the translation. Okay, so let's start off by working out the perimeter of each of the two rectangles. Okay, so first, the perimeter of ABCD. We work out perimeter using our formula two lengths plus two breadths. So the length, we're going to just be working with the measurements based on the Cartesian plane. So the length is going to be, say, from here, negative 5 to 2. That is a distance of 7. And the breadth is going to be from negative 2 down to negative 7. That's a distance of 5. So the length is 7 and the breadth is 5. So when I fill it in over here, I'm going to have 2 times 7 plus 2 times 5. Then I work that out as 14 plus 10, giving me a perimeter of 24. Now, this doesn't have a unit of measurement like centimeters or anything like that. So we're just going to say units. So the perimeter of this rectangle, ABCD, is 24 units. Now let's have a look at the perimeter of the image of ABCD after the translation. So first, same formula, but now we're doing the image of ABCD. Then we're going to fill in our length and our breadth. So if you look at this rectangle over here, the length is from negative 1 to 6 as a distance of 7. And the breadth is from 1 up to 6 as a distance of 5. So we have the same length as we had over there and the same breadth as we had over there that we're filling in over here, giving us 14 plus 10, which gives us a perimeter of 24 units. So the perimeter for both of these is equal to each other. Okay, now let's have a look at the area for the two rectangles. So for question C, we're working out the area of the original ABCD rectangle. And the formula for area is length times breadth. So I'm going to take the length, which was 7, multiplied by the breadth, which is 5. Okay, and then we're going to go and work that out. That gives us a, an area of 35 square units. Then question D is to work out the area of the other rectangle, the image of ABCD after the translation. So we're working out the area over here with the same formula. The length is also 7. The breadth is also 5. So I have 7 times 5 again, giving me an area of 35 square units. So now... If you look over here, the perimeter we worked out for this one and the perimeter for this one were the same. 
and the area and the area were also the same. Now we can draw a conclusion. When you have shapes that or when you have a shape that is being translated, the size and shape do not change. If I go back over here and I take this rectangle and I put it over there, it's exactly the same size and shape as the original rectangle was. It hasn't changed in size and shape. Okay, it's just changed position. That's all that changed. So when you have a shape that is translated, the size and shape do not change. The image is congruent to the original shape. Remember we learned earlier in the year about congruency. When two shapes are congruent, they are identical to each other. They can be in different positions, they can have different orientations, but their size and shape are identical. So when you have a shape that has been translated like this, then the image is congruent to the original shape. So when a shape is translated, the size and the shape do not change, and that means that the image is congruent to the original shape. This means that the area and the perimeter of the image are the same as the area and perimeter of the original figure. Okay, now let's quickly have a look at the rules for translation. Now, when you are doing translations, you can plot the points and then work out what is going to be after the translation. But there is also a way of working it out without having to actually do any drawing on the Cartesian plane. and helps to know what the rules are. If you've got a point T, which is translated, B units to the right. That means whatever B might be, B might be 2 units to the right, or it might be 10 units to the right, or it might be 15 units to the right. Whatever B is, we're going to make a rule that we could use for translating this point a certain amount of point uh, places to the right okay so over here if you're starting with t which has the coordinates x y whatever x is whatever y is if we are changing the position by moving it to the right that is going to affect the x value the y value is not going to change the x value is going to change so when you move to the right the x value is going to change and going to the right if you look on your Cartesian plane over here the further right you go the higher the x values get the further left you go the lower the x values get so as you move to the right the x value is going to increase so over here our rule is going to say if you've got x y for the point t then the, if you're moving B units to the right, then your X value is going to increase because you're going to the right, so it's getting bigger. It's going to increase by B, and Y is going to stay the same. That's if you are only moving to the right, if you're not moving up or down. So if you're moving to the right, your X value is going to get more by however number of places you are moving to the right. Okay, and then if you're moving to the left, it's going to be the opposite. Your X value is still the one that's going to be affected because you're moving horizontally and x, the x values are about the horizontal position. So your x value is still going to be the one that's affected, but because you're going to the left, it's going to get less, it's going to get smaller, so you're going to subtract. So it's going to be x minus b, and then the y value won't be changed if you're not moving up and down, up or down as well. Okay, so if you're moving horizontally, the x value is affected. If you're moving to the right, x gets bigger. If you're moving to the left, x gets smaller. Now let's have a look at what happens if you're moving vertically. If you're moving up, think about on your Cartesian plane, the higher up you go, what happens? Your y values increase. And the lower down you go, your y values decrease. So over here, if we are going up, then the point t with the coordinates x, y, whatever they might be, they are going to change the x value. If you're moving vertically, it doesn't affect the x, it affects the y. So your x value stays the same, but your y value is going to increase because the higher up you go, the more your y value gets. The lower down you go, the less your y value gets. So if you go B units down, then your point is going to change to x and y minus B. So if you're moving vertically, if you're going up, your y value gets bigger. If you're going down, your y value gets smaller. And of course, you can combine these as well. If you're going right, your x value gets bigger. And if you're going down, your y value gets smaller. So you can combine these together.
But as soon as you see to the right, it means x is getting more. As soon as you see to the left, x is getting less. As soon as you see up, y is getting more. As soon as you see down, y is getting less. Okay, and that is how we do translations in transformation geometry. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.